Hello everybody, this is Mackerel Phones. Today I'm playing The Beginner's Guide. I've been interested in this video game ever since it came out. Because it's made by the same people who, or the same person I should say, who made The Stanley Parable, which is one of my all-time favorites. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I'm hoping this one will not be about video games. Not be because a, a video game about video games is bad, but because I feel there are more constructive things that art can do than sort of critique its medium like that. Though it still can be very interesting, but, you know, it's like when you have a novel that's all about how it's a novel. Sometimes I wonder just how valuable that really is. Well, it gets you thinking, at least. And that's valuable in of itself. You, you know, you might want to go just play this one yourself, actually. I mean, this is a, is a very narrative-driven experience, and it won't be the same to watch it. But if for some reason you still would like to see old mackerel phones play through it... Well, thank you, I'm flattered. Let's go. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today, I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Well, this looks quite a bit different. 
Whisper machine, eh? What? Whisper machine active. Shift destruction imminent. Oh. Well, that's not good. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Yeah, pr pretty, uh... Wasn't even any sound effect. I assume that Coda is actually either made up for this or is the creator. But maybe I'm not giving Coda enough credit, I don't know. That is to say, the creator of the Stanley Parable, I mean. There... There has to be a way out of here. Um... Whisper is an interesting name for a spaceship. Is the message supposed to be- Oh! I dismissed this corridor. I thought maybe they wanted to tell us that we couldn't escape. And it was a metaphor of some kind. Security call breached. Hostile alien life form inbound. Really? Fine. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Koda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shoot it Oh, it's a pane of glass. Uh, it is a bit dark in here, isn't it? Maybe I'll up the brightness. No. It's no good. Um. Okay. Oh! I see the stars! That's good. We want to get out of here, right? I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. So you can. It's very beautiful. Stars are very beautiful. I could just stand here for an hour staring at them, but you know, we gotta escape from the whisper. I mean, all artists start somewhere. This is a start, right? Right. Yeah, I can imagine fighting enemies in this map. If there were any. I'm kinda glad there weren't. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I. <laughs> Sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Thank you. First person labyrinth with no maze, or okay, no map. This is the part that's Pretty interesting. Bad. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? It's easy to say yes when it's just a video game. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't really think there's any other option anyway. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Uh... Okay. the beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it, like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but... What's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind.
2008, huh? You know, I was born in November. But certainly not in November of 2008. Oh. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Now that is weird and experimental. Um, the past was behind her. Yeah, this is a real artsy kind of thing, isn't it? Well, personally, I don't really like this kind of level of artsiness, but I understand where he's coming from. He's, he's developing. So it's a short and relatively ah. minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Fair enough. It seems more like a proof of concept. Then, uh... Why, oh, why does the future keep changing? Well, hold on. Wait a second, what are they saying? The future could not be seen. The past was behind her, but the future could not be seen. Why does the future keep changing? Well, it keeps changing because it hasn't... Well, I mean, it's not changing, really. It's just it hasn't existed yet. Perhaps your perception of what you expect to happen is what's changing. But when she stops and looks... Okay. Well, I have to admit, walking backwards is a pretty interesting idea of expressing a, a narrative with, but if the future is always behind her... But it's, it's it, the problem is it's sort of silly. Especially with this rather corny story. I mean, I'm sure it's coming from a sincere place and it's worth something, but... It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Yeah, these are like the weird experimental art games that I've occasionally played on, you know, online. Oh no. You are now entering... What? What am I entering? Anything? Care to... I can't go off the path. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Nah, that's just pretentious nonsense. Oftentimes, oh. Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Well, speaking of nonsense... I, I wish see... I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Now this is... now we're getting interesting. Stark, minimalistic environments, a single flight of stairs. Oh. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I do wonder if these are actually little experiments that the creator of the Stanley Parable made, or if he just made them up for this video game to make a point. I don't know. I don't know what's in the door, either. Um, stranger appears. You must address A and rally. A that's warm what? and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Oh. Kudo would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. I like the name that sounds of that organ game.
Some of those would have been really dumb, but a few of them I think are actually pretty cool ideas. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. What puzzle? Or is this a switch? Oh, is the puzzle in here? It's rather dark. I don't like dark. Um. Oh, there's like a fog. Uh, maybe this way? I'm moving backwards so I can have a reference point. Yeah, there's just another door. Oh, wait a minute, that's what- there's just another door! Let's flip the switch again, right? Right? No? Is there a switch next to the door? Uh, oh, wait, yeah, there's something right there. How do I- How do I get to it? Do I crouch? Can I crouch? Doesn't seem like it. Um. Um. Okay, this is probably very simple. What am I missing? So we have a switch. Oh, I know. We need to run in while the door is closing. Is that it? Yeah, I bet you that's it. Didn't work. Didn't trigger a switch, even though I clicked. There we go! Uh, see? Right, let me just walk you through it. You're gonna hit the switch on the outside to open the door, then hit the same switch and walk through the door before it closes. You'll see a second switch on the inside, which will open the second door. I just figured that out already. Well, Don't why are you explaining? That solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. Oh, look, three dots. I'll name these three dots: face, wall face. It's like facade from The Legend of Zelda, except not evil, but instead awesome. Anyway, I did solve that puzzle. Why do you feel need so to tell me? that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright, now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. He made games so esoteric that you had to hack them to find more information. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing, or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Oh, not this again. Oh, I'm now exiting? I suppose that we just got through one more phase of his uh -huh. artistic career. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. We're in 2009 now.
a descent. I guess it does look like we're going down a little hill, a little slope, you can see it there. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. This reminds me of a, gives me a Yume Niki vibe. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. All right, we can't the tools go available way. to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Well, the furniture does look rather boxy. It still looks rather boxy. Really does give me a Yume Niki vibe. Platforming. Why didn't they mention the space bar as jump when we were on that screen showing us the controls at the beginning? I don't know. Of all the things I expected to find in the basement, this was not it. And this time, I really have no idea what it might mean. Is there fall damage? Let's find out! No. I didn't expect there to be. Um. I guess we're trying to get to the bottom of all of this. Black and white, like the keys of a piano. But there are these splotches of orange around here. It's rather mysterious. Um, how far down does this go? This strikes me as by far the most effective of all the games of, uh, of his we've seen so far. Not so much as a game, but as a tone piece. Once again, I know I've said this before, but video games is the name of the medium, even if not all of them, like this one for example, are necessarily games. Because this isn't really a game, it's almost like a... Well, I'm not quite sure what you'd call it, but it doesn't matter what it is, because it is a video game. Oh, wait a minute. This whole thing has been like a funnel! Weird. It also gives me an antechamber vibe. Was that one made in Source? I think it was not made in Source, but I might be wrong. Where did that come from? Well, do I want to go down through the empty pens? Or through... Oh, they go nowhere. Are they trying to say we're all trapped like animals, or... Oh. Oh, an elevator! That is not quite what I expected to have happen. I probably should have seen what would happen if I'd run down that ledge down there, but I... Too late for that, isn't it? What the... Oh, we can only go this way. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. That strikes me as avant-garde as Takeshi's Challenge. 
This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Oh, he's one of those. That kind of annoying, obnoxious, pretentious, modernist artist. It's not that they can never be interesting, that they can never be good, but... Well, I don't know. I suppose I welcome that sort of experimentation in as new of a medium as video games. We need, uh, people who are willing to go way outside the box. Without those sorts of people, we'd all be slaves to dogma. Oh, what the... Anyway, there's the door. <gasps> the sky! I feel like we've entered the real world at la- Oh! It's... It's Wallface again. Hello, Wallface. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. I wonder if it's a metaphor for something. Perhaps it means that, uh... You need to look at a problem from a different angle sometimes? Or what seems to be trapping you might actually set you free? I don't know, those ones, the second one, the first one's a cliche, and the second one strikes me as bad advice. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Ah, thank you. It'll probably be better than my interpretations. I mean, you knew the guy. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. I suppose I'll answer, uh, three. Yes. Well, I mean, I know we've only just met, but, I, I, you know, I... I trust people until they give me reason not to. None of those are true, though. I, I do remember exactly how to get, get in. I, I remember how it works. I'm not sure you can get out is the problem. I'm pretty sure it's a one-way sort of puzzle. I guess I always have to say one. Is this a new prison? Oh wait, no, it's more listen guys. Oh, I see. There's only one dialogue option that'll let me through. That's some bad game design. I'm sorry. Actually, no, this is a different room. I think.
Is this about how other people change our expectations? Or... Or about how, say... Are, what, like, are they trying to escape from... Like the prison they are trying to and escape so from. And so we make one last descent. Ignorance? Down to the final floor of the level. Is it the artless materialism of the bourgeoisie or something like that? The black space between doors. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Still in 2009, huh? Oh. Is this actually left by players, or is it not? Sure. How do I look at it? Do I... Oh. Nice room, not. Um, okay? So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like... I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too bushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it, that in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you. This idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Dakota's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. That one is a particularly weird message. It's true, it's interesting when you can really sort of perceive what kind of a person the artist is from their work. But ass but. That could quite plausibly have been written by somebody from the internet.
Well, can I open it? No, I can't. He's clearly aware of how much he's subverting typical video game uh, expectations. Oh, the notes become transparent once you read them. Or open them, anyway. Wait, someday you'll meet him? Someday you'll meet him. Chimes? You would very much like to be desired. Join the join the club. What an interesting association of dots. Reminds me of a like a school of fish. Oh, that one. I know I, he said that there's no need to look at all of them, but these are kind of interesting. This is my favorite one. It's sort of hypnotic. Misery? Oh, could I jump across that pit, do you think? Um, or should I go look at the painting? Uh, it looks like there's another doorway on the side of the painting. I will go look at it. What do you mean, what is it? It's clearly, it's one of those silly abstract paintings. Which are really just silly nonsense, um... But, I mean, it's pretty. Like, it's a good associ it's a good combination of colors. At least it's not one of those, you know, randomly slinging paint at a canvas and it represents the decay of society or whatever. So that kind of stuff is... This is avant-garde as heck. A lot of these do express loneliness. A lot of them do. This whole... Wow, that is a huge painting. Oh! The road out. We have to go back up there on that thing, don't we? Yeah, we do. What the painting is? Yes, we wall all. Huh? What the painting you mean? Oh, a cabbage thing again. What's well, because it is dots? That's it, it is very much dots. Like you know, probably took you know. Well, actually, I don't know how long it would take to make... I don't know how you program something like that. Devil Tower Star. That's another one that we've seen a couple of, I think. Maybe. Well. Okay. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. Is that a quote from something? Reminds me of a Lovecraft story. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Interesting. Spiraling nonsense. Calling In each your own of his games, oh. after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle. 
that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Guys, it's not that complex. Guys, it's like took me like a minute to think of this. It's not that complex. Because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces. Before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Why doesn't it always trigger? There we go. It's really a very simple puzzle, guys. But it is a pause, isn't it? Oh, they're typewriters. I see, he's just wallowing in his loneliness, isn't he? Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Porn stars die too? What the heck are you... That's a very pretty well out there. I suppose we're not gonna go look at it though. We could draw, we could draw life up from that well. Instead, we're gonna go talk to some porn stars. Look at the texture of the walls. Blocky corridors. Lots of those. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Yeah, this is a bit different, isn't it? Well, none of those things are right. You should put a table there. But fine. I'll put a TV there, sure. That is not a TV, that's a table. Yeah, a picture of a horse. I see, he's not going to listen to any of my suggestions. Although, I admit the table is a better idea than a TV there. Uh, Tesla coils. I mean, it doesn't matter what I say. Number two. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. A lot of uh, so, okay, stuff is like that. He throws that. it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. A lot of amateur stuff anyway. Oh. Yeah, this is a different direction. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. Sure. I get it. The idea is that we're just... Oh, it's wall face again. Anyway, I, the idea is just that we're randomly... Is just that we're going to be slaves to it. It's like the Stanley parable, isn't it?
I assume they mean that one. I just want to be sure first. It's a nice photo. Whatever you say, crazy narrator who's going to make the point that I'm just a slave and what's making me imprisoned is that I'm listening to him. The left side sofa. Oh, there's nothing outside the window this time. Oh, I get it. They're going to make a world out there that we can escape into. I mean, the left side sofa. Which one is that? I mean, I guess this is the one that's on my left, so... Um, they mean go on to the left side of the sofa? Well, we can't move that one, or this one? Uh, here? Um, here? Moving them Gordon Freeman style with your knees? There's no other sofa in the room other than these two. Left side sofa. Which one... What does that mean? Like, depending on what angle you look at this room from. I mean, it changes what, what, what side the sofa... Which one's the left sofa? I did not expect this to be the kind of game where I would get stuck. That is not what I expected to happen. I'm doing all kinds of clicking, just to firmly eliminate that neither of these sides are the sides we should be looking at it from. I'll write this side. Oh, now I just need to touch the shelves. These? Sure. Huh? I see. The game is our prison. This guy is trying to escape from something. Perhaps the humdrum of everyday life, or death, or something like that. But he can't, because there isn't had any luck so far. And his video games all reflect that. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside, and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created, and the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. But... Then how is it the prison game? It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, 
all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Well, that's what my Let's Plays are. I suppose that's really what a lot of the stories and books I've written are, too. At least till I get them published someday. Maybe I will have gotten something published by the time you see this, even. I hope so. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't that be nice? So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? What is it with him in these ominous environments and to me, this environment modern is decor? Meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Glad as all heck. Though I might have to be living in the... Or... Everyone knows lonesome hands make lousy homes. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. I wonder what would have happened if I had taken the other door. I don't know, but at least in this one I have a friend. He's my boss. Wish we were that quick in real life. Ah, uh, sure, can do. No problem, man. Eh? It's nice to have somebody be nice to me. Wait a minute, why aren't you doing anything, though? It's all me. Even when he has someone to talk with, he still doesn't want to sh want to, you know, express himself. Oh, it's the sinks on the other side of this designer counter. This reminds me of a place I stayed in in uh, Northern California once. Wow, you're good at cleaning the tub. So it's an an errand game. What the? Oh, it's just the exit. Wow, it really is disorganized. This'll take having 
Organized many a bookshelf myself. This will take hours. That book. I thought for a second it was be the better angles of our the better angels of our natures. After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you, and eventually cohere into something meaningful. I know that Koda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Strange, I feel just as much like I'm in a prison as I did before. Just a less lonely prison as all. Or maybe the prison was the loneliness. He really liked this game? I mean, Coda. I don't know what's, what's, what your deal is, Coda. I'm kind of wondering how much longer this can go on. I'm glad he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. I, I guess so. I don't quite... This isn't quite my style of video game designer, though. I'm not going to lie to you. This Coda fellow. Oh, question. But, of course, it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. It's a nice avant-garde house. Windswept, barren wildernesses, blocky corridors, and... and darkness, and modern decor. Lamp Which is the whole point too. of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. This one gets a bit goofy. Full classroom, isn't it? This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life, to look at you and think, Wow, this person's a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think about that way in your own life? Who do you know so well developed as a person that they make you feel disgusted with yourself? Compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful. I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how do we do it, but how do we do it effortlessly? This is easy. It is so easy. It is so About halfway easy. through the game, the perspective shifts. And you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. Oh. Shame that the world's ending.
I fell pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. I don't, because it's a lot less sophisticated than, say, a novel with the same point. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. He reuses a lot of assets. Oh, there's the stage. Okay, okay. Um. Yeah, we're, uh, this is the background for the, for the stage. We, we're just going back here because we might need to get our costumes on before the play starts. Reminds me of hanging out at the auditorium in my high school. Remember, near my, in my senior year, we just sneak around, or there was a few times we just snuck around all parts of the school we hadn't been in before. We even went into the girls' locker room. It was a lot like the boys. Coda is very hard on himself, isn't he? They're air fresheners. Oh, I get it. He's blaming himself because he failed on something in his life and he made this game to take out his anger or express his emotional state or something. Stepping back from it. It's a beacon. And we're locked out from success forever. At least for that one person, geez, there, there are plenty of other chances we'll have further down the further down the line. The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away, which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Ah, 2010, we're moving up in years. Mobius trip. Keep your eyes closed. Um, okay. Um, 
So it's very exciting. I'm, I'm, my eyes are actually closed, though, so I don't really know what's happening. Oh, I opened my eyes. Um. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Um, lots of doors and box heads. You should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution, by the way. While they're all panicking. We're going to go save the world. Okay, so that's not honest. What is? Okay, we can't jump over him. It's the Whisper again! Okay. The door is hurtling right this way. We have to say something honest. Um... I figured maybe bursting with creativity was honest enough, but... Uh... There we go. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? But then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. All good questions. Oh, hello. Who, who are you? Yeah, I'm kind of freaking out here, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, this is very much a work of art about creating art. He is writer's block. Only for video game design, I, I suppose. Oh, you do? Though I can't help but have the feeling that, uh... Well, I mean, this isn't about me, it's about Coda. Coda's the one who's having artistic difficulties. If the last game featured Although all Coda of us talking do. explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, 
frustration, anxiety, depression even. And yet still he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? These are like some of those weird free games you can find online. From my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. I like the white mist instead of blackness, a little less ominous to me. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. But it's not simple and making any work of art is not happy all the time. To me, not accept having accepted that as an artist is like unbelievably childish. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about, and I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. I don't really know how much I actually like this. Oh, hello, guard. Oh, I'm a woman. Oh wait, is Coda upset because he's having relationship problems? That's really dumb. I'm sorry, Coda, that you're like this insecure. Don't get me wrong, I've been miserable and unhappy myself, but... And of course, it's the machine. The machine of his creativity, I guess.
Where's the machine? Um, well, we're back in the auditorium again. Can't get off the stage, though. Remember, you can click to fire the gun. Yeah, I know. But where's something? Where's the machine? Do I have to shoot down the wall? So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It yeah, you have to do that as an artist. Isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? As a writer, I never realized just how important it was having feedback, you know, for what you have created. So I started showing Coda's work to people. But it is essential. I took this one, essential. and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give them some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need, to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. Hey, can I pause this game? Yeah, you can pause the game. Makes sense you could skip it or have something on the main menu like a select whatever chapter you want kind of deal, because that's the kind of video game this is. It's almost like a book in some ways. 
but of course I want to continue. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Very ominous game, I think you might mean to say. This kind of abstract architecture, though, there is something very inhuman about it. I've never known anybody who's as moody as Coda here. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level, so when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. I'm ready now. I'm not going to bother going through that... through that maze. Is that sound effect? Isn't that from... Well, I, it might be from the Stanley Parable now that I think about it. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? That he dislikes you, I guess. The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the Invisible Maze, it's frustrating to me, because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Okay, let me just see if I can turn the switch. Um. Oh, there we go. Not entirely sure why it seemed so resistant to uh, going around. That's that sort of du du sound effect. I think it might be from Portal, actually. The Stanley Parable did start off as a mod of Portal 2, I think. 1516. I'd say that if we actually had to guess this number, it would probably be the most unreasonable thing I'd ever seen a video game ask. Well, other than Dikeshi's challenge. But even then, there's something spectacular in that kind of avant-gardeness. Not that that's a word, but you know what I mean. What is it with these kind of first-person exploration games and not having you ever meet another human? The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute-forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. Except by hacking it. And it's scary for me, the idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely. Just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so 
let me do that. Once again, by hacking the game, you can solve the problem. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. I remember, it's June of 2011, I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... Well, it might be impossible to know someone through their work. I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. He might not know himself. He might not know himself. Stanley Parable guy. Wait. Color? Other than black and gray, that is. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left, and it felt somehow like I had failed. Did I screw up? You can't always find yourself in other people. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. He was never in it for feedback from other people. I don't think was I ever he? told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. Personally, I think artists who have that attitude that they create only for themselves, well, I think that's sort of selfish. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally, for a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. You mean, Coda wasn't the one who put in the lamp posts? We've been lied to? And then you stopped, and I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean?
I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. There's no lamp post this time. We all always are looking for ourselves and other artists, but I can't help but to think that as a Doing a Let's Play, or not that that's my art. I'm not an artist because I do Let's Plays. Those are not art at all. Don't even suggest that. Maybe it does make me feel like I'm important just because I'm showing people, you know, showing off other people's work. Of course, I have their indirect permission to, given that they released them to the public. Maybe I should go do something more productive with the rest of my day. In fact, I think I will. See you around, everybody. This has been Mackerel Phones. Actually, can we just skip this level? What happens if we do? Is there anything else? At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Oh. There is.
more, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. I think you're being a little too hard on yourself. Solution, solution, solution. Very rena renaissance looking. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just Very really enjoyed making looking. prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. It's impossible to know the artist through their work. Is that this... Is that the argument of the beginner's guide? Well, maybe it is, but I do think you can learn a lot about them from it. Some of them. Not all of them. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. What are we seeing now? Surely these are not more of Coda's games. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. I don't think you're alone as far as that goes. I think we're all there. What now? I think I need to go, and I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for, and so I'm just gonna... Okay.
The sky looks blue, but I hear thunder. Wait. It's the beam from the... from the whisper. Well, that was, uh, the beginner's guide, everybody. I'm not quite sure why it's called that. I suppose that we can never really find ourselves in other people's art, or we can, but... It's hard to say to what extent other people's art reflects themselves. I can't help but feel similar to, uh, the narrator here. In that, uh, by Let's Playing, I mean, not that, to be sure, not that Let's Playing is what, what, what makes, you know, gives me art, but... I'm glad that something like this gets made. It's an interesting experience. However... It would strike me that the central problem with the Beginner's Guide, at least it seems to me, is that the central story is, the central problem, the great tragedy, is that this person lost a friend because he showed this friend's art to other people without the friend's permission. And he did this because he liked feeling good about himself and wanted other people to say that he was doing something good and that's what would make him feel good about himself. Not that that isn't a problem, but it doesn't quite strike me as the profound tragedy that the Beginner's Guide seems to present it as. It seems kind of 
humdrum, commonplace to me. That's not to say that the beginner's guide didn't do some clever things, though, because it did. The way that uh, the narrator is basically the villain, I thought was uh, pretty clever, pretty well done. I mean, in effect, he's like, he's stolen Coda's games and <laughs> is selling them, but modified with his narration and, you know, altered so that they uh, uh, have some kind of structure that he can make sense of. I guess that's really what it is. It's all about him, even though it seems to be all about Coda. I also feel a bit embarrassed that it didn't even occur to me to really remark on that, uh, that... You can't really know a person from their art. You can have an idea of the sort of things they're interested in, uh, perhaps some stylistic elements that they like. Maybe you can get an idea of their sense of humor, what they think is cool. But there's a lot more to knowing a person than those things. Well, who knows? Maybe I'm just saying this after the fact to try and make myself feel better, like, oh, don't worry, mackerel phones, you're smart, you got it. You just didn't think to say it. That's what it sounds like I'm saying to me, anyway. <laughs> well, even if I didn't, you know, like it that much, it did get me thinking. And that's always worth something. That's always worth something. If you liked it, you should go, uh, buy it on Steam. Perhaps support the artist by buying some of his other projects, like the Stanley Parable. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room, and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. In any case, that was the Beginner's Guide, everybody, and this has been Mackerel Phones.